This is the remarkable story of the Agoji, the all-female unit of warriors who protected the African kingdom of Dahomey in the 18th century. They had skills and fierceness, unlike anything the world has ever seen. Inspired by true events, the movie follows the emotionally epic journey of General Naniska, as she trains the next generation of recruits, readies them for battle against an enemy determined to destroy their way of life. Their enemies, the Oyo Empire, joined forces with the Mahi people, to raid and sell the people of Dahomey as slaves to the Europeans. At this point, if you are new to Scenes Recap, click the free subscribe button to never miss any updates from us. Also feel free to give us a like, if at all this plot would interest you. The year is 1823, in West Africa somewhere in Mahi village. A group of Mahi warriors are spending some time together while gathering around a bonfire. They hear strange noises but dismiss them after some birds flee from the site. Suddenly, a group of female warriors, the Agoji, rise from the same scenery. With no mercy but full of rage, the Agoji attacks the group of men. Unmatched, the Agoji batter most of the Mahi warriors. But every war has casualties, and the Agoji lost one of their own. It turns out that the Homain women were abducted by slavers from Oyo Empire. This after Naniska, leader of the Agoji, sees a horseshoe and connects the dots, that the Mahi people collaborated with the Oyo Empire. In the next scene, the movie introduces us to the striking scenery, of the Dahomey village. A young strong-willed lady, Nawi, is with her friend at the marketplace. A trumpet is blowing and they run towards the sound with excitement. The Agoji has returned with the hostages, the villagers bow as they pass. It turns out that they are forbidden by the king to look upon the Agoji. Despite their victory, Naniska is worried as she requests to speak to their king. Meanwhile, Nawi returns home to a bombshell. Her parents have sold her to an aged man for marriage. Much to her terror, the man is violent with her in their first meeting. This angers Nawi and pushes him down, which in turn makes her father angry, and drags Nawi to offer her to the king. At the gate, they met Izogi, a veteran Agoji who takes her in. The Oyo soldiers visit the Mahi village and discover dead bodies. Their general, Oba, uncover one of the warrior's lifeless body, and learns that Mahi village was invaded by the Agoji. Meanwhile, King Gezo makes his way to meet his council while he greets his wives. Shante, one of the king's wives envies Naniska, when the king asks her to join them in the council. One of the king's attendants tells her, that when Naniska fought for the king during the coupe for the throne, the only best thing she did was to lock herself in the wardrobe. At the council, upon realizing that the Oyo were collaborating with the Mahi to sell their people to European slavers, the king decides to seek liberation for his people, and pay tributes to the Oyo Empire no more. Megan, one of the council members advises him against it, saying the call will lead to war. He suggests they keep paying tribute for peace and prosperity, and that this will also buy them time to prepare their armies. Immediately, Naniska interjects saying she is confident the Agoji can defend Dahomey, and that what prospers Dahomey currently is selling their people to slavers. But what if they run out of captives to sell? She suggests they sell gold and palm oil instead. The king is ready to give an audience to Naniska if she can reveal the amount of palm oil Dahomey can produce. In the next setting, the new recruits are prepped for what befalls them and given a chance to opt out. Izogi asks Nawi why she has not gone to the bath with her other recruits. Nawi says she liked being the last, Izogi then commands her to go to the bath. There, Nawi meets Naniska, who asks Nawi about her whereabouts. Nawi says she is 19 year old, desires to be a warrior and do not want to get married. She adds that her father brought him there as a gift to the king. Naniska tells her that stubborn daughters dump in the palace always fail. On their first day of training, Nawi is given a rope and she grumbles saying that is not a weapon. Naniska hears this and gives Nawi her sword. She then asks her to chop the dummy's head. With a sword she could not even lift comfortably. Nawi tries and fails. Naniska takes her sword back and chops it off. 
She then instructs her to go back and work on the rope like the other recruits. Later that night, Izogi narrates to Nawi her past experiences. She also advises her to focus on the new family she has. The next morning, Nawi gets along quite well with the training. Until it was time for a long race where she could not keep up. In the next contest, the Agoji challenges the male warriors for pain endurance, as they squeezed the double-edged spear through their shoulders. Izogi wins the pain endurance test. Nawi with her newly found friends, Fumbe and Ode, began laughing after their mischievous deed worked as planned. Naniska calls them and asks who designed the explosion trick. Nawi brings herself forth as the culprit, and Naniska confronts her after asking the others to leave. Though impressed by the trick, she remains strict about her indiscipline and almost kicks her out of the agoji. Izogi meets Nawi later and warns her to be careful with what she says or does. Especially with Naniska, since she might be the woman king they have heard of in so many years. Later that night Naniska wakes up after being startled by her dream. She shares the dream with Amanza who tries to interpret it for her. The same night as she walks out to get some fresh air. Naniska sees Nawi in the middle of the night practicing with a stick. Since she took her knife, in their earlier meeting after her misconduct. The next morning, the Dahomey celebration is cut short, after a visit by the Oyo soldiers, with them is General Oba, who is no stranger to Naniska. Shocked and displeased by his presence, Naniska stares at Oba. It turns out Oba sexually assaulted her some years back. However, Oba doesn't seem to recognize her. Oba and the Oyo soldiers are here to collect their tribute. Since the Agoji invaded their comrades, they demanded 20 Agoji or else they will no longer use the port for trading. Although the port belongs to Dahomey, the king subscribed to their demands. General Oba left some of his men to feast with the Dahomey people at their celebration. Naniska chooses the 20 Agoji and Nawi happens to be one of them. Shortly after Naniska walks away, the flashback of her sexual assault haunts her. The next scene is at the Weida port, where the movie introduces us to a half Dahomein, Malik, and leader of the white slave trader, Santo. Malik in aghast looks around disturbed by the slave trading scenery. Shortly the Agoji arrive and General Oba comes to welcome them. Oba eagerly awaits what he had requested but to his disappointment, the Agoji instead brought the heads, of the men General Oba left in Dahomey. To add more salt to his scar, Naniska says their king also left them with a message for him. That he, is a great king and bows to no one. After their presentation, they make a run for it. However, Naniska stays behind to fight General Oba. Nawi sees this and also chooses to stay behind to help her. Nawi quickly runs and closes the gate from other Oyo soldiers. The slavers on the other hand were thrilled with the scene and chose not to intrude. Naniska manages to knock the general down and they both flee from the scene. They jump into the water and swim towards their boat that was waiting for them. Shortly after arriving on the other end of the shore, Naniska rambles at Nawi for not following the plan. Unappreciative Naniska, tells Nawi she now thinks she is a hero for acting alone and not obeying orders. Nawi is known to be very defensive, does not silence and tries to justify her actions before Izogi stops her. Amenza then approaches Naniska alone and tells her that she was the one who did not follow the plan. Naniska explains that she planned to take the general's head back to the palace. The next scene, is a beautiful palm oil field where Naniska walks the king through the palm oil production site, and the king seems impressed with her idea. Nawi who was at the waterfall to sharpen her sword takes Malik clothes. She then tells him to return, to wider slaver naked like the slaves they trade. In their brief chat, Malik introduces himself and reveals his background. We learn that his father is white and his mother a Dahomey. Upon hearing Malik's partner coming, she returns his clothes and run away. Shortly, Malik and Santo arrive at the palace and present King Gezo with a gift. He welcomes them, especially Malik when he learns that her mother is a Dahomey. At the palace the new recruits were having their final test. The gun is shot and they run towards the bush of thorns. 
She makes it through the thorny bush, but goes back again for her friend Fumbe. She still manages to keep up with the others by jumping one step ahead. She becomes the medalist, that's if, they give medals to the winners. Naniska and the king are so impressed at her performance. Gazo specially calls her to the king's guard and awards her a sword. Naniska comes and instructs Izogi to ensure, all the thorns are removed from Nawi's skin. While checking the scars on her body, she notices a mark. Nawi says it's been there since her father chose her from an orphanage. Naniska walked out immediately and Amenza follows her to inquire what happened. It turns out Naniska got pregnant after the sexual assault, and gave Amenza the daughter she delivered terming it a burden. Amenza insists that she have the child to the missionaries and there is no way Nawi is the one. Meanwhile, Santo tries to reason with King Gezo about his decision of stopping slave trading, and shifting to palm oil production. On the next set, Malik who is walking around the palace is noticed by Nawi. In their brief chat, Malik tells her to come see him after dark just outside the palace walls. That night, the girls take their blood oath as full initiation into the Agoji. Izogi who saw Malik waving to Nawi earlier before the final test. Tells her love makes one weak and she shouldn't give her power away. Nawi saw something interesting while at the waterfall and would really want to try it. I doubt if she even listened to Izogi's advice. Later that night, Nawi sneaks out to go see Malik. Malik informs her that General Obar is plotting to collaborate with other villagers against Dahomey. Before leaving, Nawi gives Malik a sacred stone and takes his sword for remembrance. Nawi then rushes to Naniska to tell her what she heard, but she gets a lecture for going to see a man as an Agoji. Naniska warns her that she is not immune to be kicked out, for flouting the Agoji rules. Nawi who never fails to defend her motives brawls that she has done and proven her best to become an Agoji. She adds that she is too careful and would never be captured. Naniska explains that she was captured and raped every night by the Oyo soldiers. Fortunately, she managed to escape with her friend Amenza, but she was pregnant. After giving birth, she slightly cut the child's back left arm with a knife, and in it placed a shark tooth. Nawi maintains she can't be the child Naniska is speaking about. When her scar is opened up, she finds the shark tooth. This shocks her and immediately Nawi left the bath. The next day, Naniska notices the Oyo soldiers matching towards them. She estimates that they have only two days to reach Dahomey. She thinks of Nawi's explosive trick, and quickly began working on the plan, this while reciting King Gezo and Nawi's words respectively. She says, sometimes a termite can bring down an elephant and you don't need a gun to use the gunpowder, you just need a spark. So instead of waiting for them to arrive, they will bring the war to them. Early the next morning, while their enemies were sleeping, Naniska lights their erected palm oil structures, that are disguised as termites creations. Their enemies' camp was surrounded by the crawling fire, reducing their enemies' numbers to their motive, and the battle ensues. The general charges with his men at the Dahomey in a heated battle. Amanza captures the viewer's attention with how she moves the spear showing her prowess. Nawi's friend Fumbe on the other hand struggles with another, but she manages to put him down and made the kill. In between the fight a soldier, grabs Nawi from behind and throws her down. Nawi rolls and hits her head unconsciously, whilst Naniska seeks Oba. Oba on the other hand retreats seeing most of his men slaughtered. The Agoji warriors, totally dominated this fight, but they too had casualties. On Oba's cart, Fumbe and Nawi are among the captives taken. Nawi asks her friend Fumbe, who was not tied to anyone, to hop off the cart and save herself. Meanwhile, Nawi and the others are taken to wider slavers. Not long after, Nawi notices Izogi, she appears helpless and with her arm broken. She says she must slit her throat, as Naniska advises, rather than be a slave. Nawi rubbishes it and in their short chat, Izogi instructs her to squeeze the bone back in. On the next scene, Fumbe makes it back to Dahomey village and informs the others of Nawi's whereabouts. The king sends for Naniska and Amenza. He gathered his wives as well, 
to inform them he has chosen Naniska to be the woman king. Shantae immediately rebukes it in displeasure. Nawi and her sisters are auctioned to the whites. The girls had worked on an escape plan through the night. Their plan almost fails when Malik notices Nawi being auctioned. Nonetheless, their plan also needed the little destruction he created with the uproar. The girls began running from the scene, but Nawi gets captured on the run by some men. This prompts Izogi to come back for her. She gets shot and dies. To protect Nawi, Malik makes a price and takes her. Naniska on the other hand, despite the king not accepting her intention to go and save the captives, she leaves anyway. The following day she turns back and finds her friend Amenza, Megan and other warriors following her. The king learns that part of his council has gone off, despite his orders. His wife, Shantae, advises him not to call off the feast he prepared since he will look weak. Rather, Shantae suggests that the king should name another woman king. Later that night while the whites are having a night party, the Agoji sneaks into their camp. Naniska inquires the whereabouts of other captives, where one of the prisoners informs her of Izoji's death. Outraged by the news, Naniska instructs that they burn the place to the ground, and that they will not take any prisoners. Nawi sees the fight from the window and decides to join them. Before she goes, Malik gives her new clothes to change since the one she has, was stained with blood. He then tells her that he will be waiting on the beach in case she changes her mind. It turns out Malik wanted to leave for England with Nawi. Outside, Naniska is in search of Oba while Malik sets the slaves free from his friend Santos. The enraged captives beat up Santos with his girlfriend to death. Naniska finally meets her target, this time super enraged. With the scenes of her sexual assault clear in her memory like it happened last night, Naniska finally kills him with the knife, which Oba drilled through her hand. Nawi comes to her rescue when one of the white men was about to shoot Naniska. Malik at the beach still waits for Nawi. He spots her among the other warriors and she nods at him, as she proceeds with their journey back to Dahomey. In Dahomey, as the feast begin, Shantae has endowed herself to take the honor meant for Naniska. The Igoji returns and they are hailed like always, but this time they began chanting Naniska's name. Naniska surrenders her sword to the king and accepts to drop her command for disobeying the king's orders. King Gezo, on the other hand, is very delighted that the reign of the Oyo Empire has come to an end. After giving his heartfelt speech to his people, he grants Naniska the title of the woman king to rule the land with him for their tradition. The whole kingdom celebrates as she takes her seat next to the king. I couldn't find the right words to explain Shantae's reactions. Nawi says sorry to her mother Naniska since her existence has caused her pain. Naniska as well says sorry for giving her away right after her birth. Nawi couldn't handle the created atmosphere and leaves. In the final scene, Nawi asks her mother for a dance, and the two shake what their mama gave them. Share with us your thoughts on the comments below. And if you would like to see more scenes recap like this, click subscribe, to never miss any of our future updates.